Welcome, I'm Joshua Delisle, the designer blacksmith, and if you've been following these videos of us building this DIY pneumatic power hammer, do not panic, do not panic, people. I did break it, but I've now actually fixed it, and we'll go through the footage on how I went about doing that. And just to let you know that the all the amendments, including the diagram of the valve setup, the foot treadle design, what I've changed here, all of that is in an add-on download package available in the description. There's also a 20% discount there on everything that's in my shop. Without further ado, let's get on with how I went about fixing the power hammer. Right, so let me explain exactly what happened. These are the pillars that align the head of the hammer, as you see. So these obviously turn, it goes up and down, smashy, smashy, all good, and has been working fantastic. But essentially, as you can see, there was two bolts, top and bottom, that would hold these pillars on, and then there was some other screws that made sure it was engaged with the alignment of the hammer, and there was a, a slight adjustment that you could get from that. Now what had happened is I'd been forging things far too cold, and very frequently. Basically, I've been developing a, a way of making nails extremely fast. And I'm hoping after I fix the power hammer, I'll show you my new concept of tooling on how that would work. Uh, but essentially, it's lots, lots, thousands upon thousands of blows. It will rattle itself loose, is what's happened. The bolts have come loose. These popped off to the side, which meant that this hammerhead then was flailing about a bit. Um, it sounds worse than it was. It wasn't that bad, really. It just, I just noticed that everything had come loose. And then when I finally took things apart, in hindsight, the chintzy piece of pipe that I chose has actually uh, deformed itself and cracked on the edge there. Right, so what I'm going to do is actually quite simple. In fact, it makes the whole build even easier to make, believe it or not, and stronger. Uh, so, it's very simple. What I'm going to do is take off these bits of pipe that I've welded on and instead I'm going to set the holes back into the pillars themselves and tap that so the bolt will hold onto there instead. And this is actually quite thick stuff so it's enough to hold uh, the thread of the bolt nicely. Um, and then what I'm going to do is essentially get everything lined up, get these pieces clamped on under tension and then I'm gonna weld the pillars on. And that should, everything should be set in place where it's meant to be, and that will be it. It won't be coming loose because it's welded together. Now, funnily enough, some of you guys who have already attempted to build your hammers have done the same thing. Um, so, in my head, it was like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But now it broke, I've gotta fix it, and I've copied what you guys have done. <laughs> Which has led me uh, to uh, start a new Facebook group page. So it will be called the Delisle Designs Group. And the idea of that is that you guys as a community can share your experiences in having a go at the designs that I've done and, and give each other encouragement and give each other tips and tricks on how to best way of going about it because everyone's got a different approach. Now, if you've seen Gary Houston's channel, absolute top bloke, he's had a go at the horse head and I believe he's gonna very soon, if he's not already, as we're watching this video, done the ram skull as well. Um, and his take on those are really, really interesting and, and, uh, and other people as well on Instagram, I've, I've been, people have shared me the photos of what they've been doing and it's been absolutely fantastic. Um, so I think I'd like to encourage that community to get together and uh, share those experiences, which would be brilliant. Maybe we could all get together and, I don't know, have a little day building something. An idea. Anyway, let's fix this, shall we, and see how well it performs. <laughs>
why I have music on my videos. Can you hear that? Those are my kids. Right, so this is the part where the kids with ADHD move on to more entertaining videos and the adults who want to learn more stay and we get to the nitty gritty. I can say that because I do have ADHD myself and dyslexia. Those are not disabilities, those are abilities and in me saying this is where the kids with ADHD move on is Kind of like reverse psychology to entice you guys to stay because I'm going to get into some interesting things now that are going to help you. And I've decided to make this a common theme with the videos from now on because, well, if I look at myself, my tendencies with ADHD, I do get bored and as soon as people start chatting, I do move on. But also the, the graphs that YouTube provide me with, the analytics, they say the moment I start talking, it's like mass exodus, people leave. Anyway, let's move on quickly. So you can see it was very simple to make that modification. And what you don't need now is the bolts, the holes for those bolts or to tap them or anything like that, or the adjustment bolts. So all of that work is now kind of redundant. It's not necessary. You, you just put the clamp on here and that finds the central point so there's equal pressure on all the wheels. There's a nice uh, bit, bit of tautness in there and then we weld it on jobs are good and we've made sure it's all kept in line by clamping the face on first so bolted at the top clamp on face on there put these posts on where they sit we weld it on and basically the idea of having the bolts on previously was to account for sloppy fabrication so it, it basically it doesn't matter anymore it's going to work fine now i showed you what i did with the nut and welding it on and all the problems that that caused because there is a lot of mistakes, there is a lot of development that happens in the background. That's how, that's how I've gotten to the level I am. I, I happily make mistakes and I learn from those mistakes. But you always face criticism when people see you making those mistakes. So I tend to not show anybody those mistakes. So I decided in this time I was going to show you the development that I had to get these right. It still isn't perfect like that like what i did with the spring washers very lastly that isn't the ideal solution in fact what i would recommend is there's an actual boss which is basically a lug of steel that you're going to weld onto your posts and then drill and tap through all the way through that that would be better and i'm going to put those on the drawings because the drawings that you have for your power hammer at a very slightly different to mine. I modified it so you get a bit more space and all this kind of thing. So the distance that I've got between the post and the bearing, that might be slightly different, but I'm, I'm gonna go through the CAD drawing, make those amendments, and then you'll have that available for download in the description. So I'm very quickly moving on from this now to the next video because I've got a ton of work for this thing to do. I've got several thousand nails to make and what I'm going to do is create some new tooling 
So what I'm going to do that, if you've seen the previous video of me making a nail in 30 seconds, well this is going to make them within 10 seconds per nail, is what I'm hoping for. Now I've been under a little bit of criticism, if that's the right word, for my methods. Now I need you to understand, for anyone who doesn't know me know or know my journey, is I ran a relatively successful business for about eight years as a traditional uh, purist, if you like, blacksmith. And it got to the point where I really struggled to make money and my business collapsed. Now you heard my kids outside, I've got a family to feed. So my priorities have changed from suffering for my art to being profitable. And my experience now in engineering is I actually really enjoy engineering as well as the traditional blacksmithing and I'm in this weird place of going from one extreme to another and almost amalgamating the two. Now my philosophy behind those nails that I'm making, if I show you an example if you haven't seen one, I'll just show you these. Right, so as far as the client is concerned if these look like a nail, if they have all the properties of a hand forged quality nail then the last thing is the difference in price if I hand forge one of these and they look exactly the same as my mechanically made piece if you like what what the clients getting is exactly the same quality of nail just far cheaper because I'm able to mass produce it if you like now I had one comment say, or doesn't that deprive the point of something that is, that's not what the clients are after, something unique and, well, it does, if you're able to create something custom made, but at a very affordable price, then you're competitive in your market and you're more profitable. I've done the whole purist blacksmithing thing where it has to be forge welded, it has to be done only on the anvil, even your stock has to be reduced to the right length and all that kind of stuff, which is what I was trained to do. My frustration is it's not as profitable as it could be. With more profit, I'm able to make more investments. Now, what I really want to do is to teach and I'm going to let you into a very little snippet of my big future plans, but I want to set up a club a metalworking club for kids who are struggling at school with dyslexia and ADHD and all that kind of thing. And that requires funding and I hope to be able to fund some of that. Now I'm fed up of living hand to mouth where I'm paid for something and it goes straight into someone else's pockets in for the form of bills and whatnot. So in my approach of minimalizing, reducing and going more efficiently, I'm still able to be as creative and unique in my work, but I've approached it using all of the technology and methods available to me. So don't get me wrong, I love forging stuff and sometimes I will forge stuff for fun, but in this case I, I need my skills to earn me an income. And personally, I think if you are a traditionalist, purist blacksmith, I think that's fantastic. If you're able to generate enough income for you to be happy, I think that's great. But if you're trying to be commercial, then you're going to be up against people like me who are going to be making it more efficiently. And I think, I think it's that concept is why people have been getting angry with me. Anyway, going back to upgrades for the power hammer and my tendencies to fluctuate between engineering and traditional blacksmithing I've got another upgrade that you might be interested in. So right here is an off-the-shelf believe it or not linear motion um, reciprocating motor. Uh, again in the description I can show you where I got it. So essentially all I've done is I've stuck this is a 12 volt system, so I've stuck a 12 volt potentiometer onto it. It's a 200 RPM geared motor, and if I just twiddle the knob here, 
Isn't that cute? And that was really cheap, you know, and this is something that I can just stick onto the power hammer. Now, what I would do is actually connect this linkage here to the valve, and then that would control a reciprocating motion of the valve. And I'd link the potentiometer to a foot pedal. So as I take my foot off the pedal, it comes down, press it slightly, I can get that very slow movement, that very slow control, as you saw me do with the power hammer just using my foot. For those of you who've seen my Instagram page, uh, you'd have noticed that I've been doing a little bit of playing around with one of these. Now don't be afraid, it's okay. This is called a microcontroller. This one specifically has been made by a company called Arduino. In fact, this one's a clone by eLegu. These are cheap. I can't believe how affordable this technology is. But what I have in my hands here is the ability to do robotics and automation. And all it requires is putting in a bit of time to learn how to code and how to wire up these things. But the amount of information that is on the web is incredible. Now, I'm excited about tech like this just as much as I'm excited about forging and making things. And if I can give you the skills to both enter into blacksmithing and metalwork from a place of doing fun and from a place of doing business, I think I think we've got something good going on there. And I think the place is for small businesses to rise in this day and age. I think small local businesses in manufacturing is, is a good place to go, especially with the technology and information that's available. Right, so I really appreciate your interaction, your thoughts on the power hammer, your thoughts on the upgrades. If you wanna see that video of me installing one of these onto it so you get the regular reciprocation rather than the treadle motion, please leave a comment and let me know. If you found this helpful or in any way useful, please like it, subscribe, because that helps the algorithm promote this channel further. And the more I'm promoted, the more I can create um, concepts and designs and things for you guys to use. So thank you. Thank you so much, all of your really kind comments. And I'm possibly working with a few of you in some of the future um projects so do stay in touch right nails then i got that stag to make and a whole load of other stuff but right let's just get on with it shall we bye bye <laughs>